<laughs> Thank you so much for coming to our Green Sanctuary event. Um, many of you came to our event uh, uh, in January where Dr. Janice talked about um, uh, the health benefits of plant-based food and, and whole grains and so forth. And um, yeah, we, we rode her, her uh, coat, uh, what is it, coat, coat tails, because, you know, we are the green sanctuary, but, you know, no one really wants to hear more about land being, you know, mowed down and the methane coming out of the cows and, and you know, really doom and climate change. But that's what we're all about. But we just rode the fact that I actually heard Dr. Janice talk and I realized that I care more about the health. And I think that's just a, a natural uh, tendency for us to to really be very interested in our health and um, and so we we rode that wave and we have posted that video and I think that um, we thank her very much for helping us with with getting getting going on on a very important theme of of um, of food and uh, plant-based cooking and just to reiterate what the green sanctuary is is all about this year and the next few years we're going to focus on food and we're going to focus on energy and you may have already been at, at one of the events for food and plant-based eating and and just not being radically you know black white about plant-based eating but just tending to to understand the many reasons why we might want to have one more meal that's plant-based and then on the energy side, really looking at our energy usage. We have now even one more reason, which is the cost, which has been astronomically increased. But we also have, um, once we get ourselves audited and all these amazing rebates that we're going to be getting from the uh, Inflation Reduction Act uh, coming up, we can also teach people that are not wealthy, not in living in a house that has any uh, insulation, doesn't have, uh, you know, spends much more on their heat and cooling than the average person's per, per in, in their income. So we'll be able to take it to a social level too, and we can bring that number of, I think it's about 25 people have had energy audits. We need to have it up at 80 percent to be able to hit our numbers here in Connecticut, which is a, 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 the numbers that are also um, connected with the UN um, plan for uh, climate change. So that's a little bit of what we're all about at the Green Sanctuary. Um, in front of you, you have a guide. Uh, uh, you'll see that in front of you, uh, Katie is holding it. And I want to draw your attention to the first page because this is your handy dandy way of getting to all the guides that you might see on that fl floral um, uh, table there. And what I want to do is uh, just help people to understand that with anything like, like this that you see perhaps uh, in the order of service, we sometimes, you see a URL there under guides and recipes. In blue, you see tinural.com. That is your URL. And if you're on a computer and that is blue, you can press on it. And many of us know that. But on the right-hand side, that's your QR code. And I want to encourage everyone to start thinking about using that, because that's going to be giving us an opportunity to share information with you. And if you're like me, I never print anything. Or you have to have it printed, and you can decide. And so we can really cut down on, on printing. Does everybody want to just take their, their phone and, and put it in front of the uh, or, focus on that uh, Q, uh, QR code and, and just see what it takes you to. And simultaneously, I will. Um, Does okay. everyone know how to scan a QR code? You pull up your camera. So I'm going to pull up my camera. And then you focus it on the QR code. And it's going to come up with a little yellow dingle. And then you're going to click on that dingle. So boom, I click on it. And it's going to bring me directly to that website. And you can do that a lot of the time at like restaurants and stuff, and it's it's not self-explanatory. So I will 
Look, and now I got there. Boom. So there should be unmentioned up at the top that says, like, do you want to go to this website? Um, yeah, those points are going to go to that. If you have an LG phone, you have to download an app. Oh. It's not going to work. I do. I have, down, I have an LG phone. I have downloaded an app, and I actually use it. I, I cheat, and I use it with my textbook, and that's how we do it. Great. So, so does, has everybody had a chance to try that? Yeah, you might have LG. Oh, you have one of those. Oh, oh, it's not uh, a green package. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, you know what really you know, tonight? This is when you get home. So you can take the package with you, right? And so you can do it the old fashioned way with the URL. Um, the other thing is, we can also email you following up from this. If you register to be here, we can email you the slide deck which has the links you just click on. So, right. Multiple right. And so what we're just saying is that if you want any of these recipes or guides, um, you can just click on them uh, on the website and, and print out any of the recipes that we've provided. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to turn it over to our master chef, Katie. Thank you. Good evening. Um, so th thank you so much, Sabina, for all of your hard work in putting this night on. It's been so fun in planning this with you. Um, we complement each other pretty well. So I got tasked with sort of doing, or I volunteered to do the little um, Green Sanctuary introduction and just grounding us in like why we're here. And it's because food has a tremendous impact on both the environment and our health. And Sabina talked about that a little bit. And it's one of the goals of the UUA. Um, so when we are in a couple years, when we're wrapping up our campaigns and we're applying to be a UUA Green Sanctuary, this, you know, doing food, um, food education and helping to really move people towards eating a low carbon or a, a climate friendly diet is one thing that's going to be, you know, really good in our favor. So hopefully we can get that designation. Um, and also acknowledging, we talked about this during the last workshop that we had um, with Janice, was that food choices are really complicated, right? And so we try not to be preachy. Um, we're all just doing the best we can to get through each day and do what's right for ourselves and our family and our planet and what fits in our pocketbook and what tastes good and what fits in with our cultural backgrounds and everything. So food choices are super complicated. And uh, we're just not, there's no judgment here in any way. We just want to provide you with information. One of those QR codes on the previous page will take you to um, a re the YouTube um, recording of Janice's workshop. If you missed that one, it was excellent. I know I left that workshop saying, well, I know now what not to eat, right? But what do I eat? Um, and that's what we're here tonight is to just give you some information and make it fun about, you know, what yummy things can we try that you know, maybe I've just been a little bit afraid to, to try before. Um, and so let's get on with it. Yeah. I'm just going to zoom through these. So, you know, the environmental benefits are really clear. Um, switching to a plant-based diet lowers your carbon footprint, lowers the, you know, you're saving an animal's life, you're saving water, you are saving carbon dioxide emissions, you're, you know, reducing the amount of land that's needed to enable to produce uh, food to feed us. So it's really something that a lot of people are going to have to do as we continue to increase our population on the planet and everybody needs to get fed. So we can't continue eating the way we have been. Um, now, I know when I started all this, I was like, I don't know what a plant-based diet is. I don't know the difference between uh, what's a flexitarian, what's a pescatarian, and everything. I found this chart, and it's great. It's, it's absolutely great. great. So let's start with the flexitarian, because that's actually where I live, right? I'm a flexitarian because sometimes I just really need that piece of pepperoni pizza, right? It's delicious. There's no other options. I got to have it. So I'm going to allow myself to have that piece of pepperoni pizza, right? So it's got a little meat on it. It's got the cheese. It's fantastic. I'm not going to say no. That's why I'm in the flexitarian category. Now, other people might have more willpower than me. 
it's not a moral choice. I mean, maybe it's a moral choice. I don't know. But we all have our failings. And so you can. <laughs> Right. Um, it, my my youngest child is a pescatarian, really pretty good at it. Right. So pescatarians have said, I'm not going to eat chicken or beef or pork, but I will eat fish. OK. So they take the meat and the poultry off the table, literally. An ovo vegetarian um, will not eat seafood or meat and poultry. So you can see we're working our way across um, or dairy products. OK. That's kind of a tough one sometimes. I thought it was really hard to give up dairy products until I started, and I started doing the research, and I was like, you know what? It's not so bad. There's some good choices. Um, so you can see lacto-vegetarians um, don't eat eggs. There's the lacto, oh, you know, all the different choices. Today, we're going to be kind of over here looking at the plant-based and the whole food plant-based. Okay, The difference between plant-based and whole food plant-based is that whole food plant-based don't use oils and they don't use any kind of processed foods, okay? So sometimes not using any processed foods at all, you know, it's whole foods. You make everything from scratch. It's kind of hard to do sometimes. So some of our foods that we're showing tonight are just plant-based. Some of them are whole food plant-based. We're not gonna make a huge distinction about it, but it's something that you can think about um, when you're preparing your own meals. All right, this is my dish that I made. I have to admit, this is not my recipe. This is Jeff Tyler's recipe, but it just looked so yummy, I had to try it. So I made this for the first time for you all. Um, you're my guinea pigs, <laughs> so I hope it's delicious. Um, I did try it last night, and it's pretty good. So this is um, Jeff's cauliflower with a kick, but I want to rename it Katie's Kicky Cauliflower because I think that that is much more fun. Um, since I made it, I get to... I get to call it Katie's Kiki Cauliflower. Um, and really simple ingredients. This um, wood, so this is plant-based, but it's not whole food plant-based because we used the um, pre-jarred uh, sweet chili sauce. Okay, um, This is what makes it not whole food. You can make your own sweet chili sauce. That wasn't going to happen yesterday when I was putting this together. Um, so it's super easy to put together. Um, you get your cauliflower, you cut it up, you mix up your batter. The batter is just equal parts of some sort of plant milk. I like oat milk. I find it creamy. Um, everybody has their own preferences, and I encourage you, if you are trying plant-based milks for the first time, just try them all. See what you like. I decided I didn't really love almond milk and soy milk and everything, but I like the oat milk. It just is it's right for me. Um, and so equal parts of plant milk and flour, and it makes this really nice thick batter. And, <clears throat> and then you've got your panko breadcrumbs. Jeff says the panko breadcrumbs are essential to get the crunch. Okay, other kinds of breadcrumbs are just going to be soggy. If you've ever done cauliflower like this before, sometimes you get the real soggy factor. These are super crunchy, and it's thanks to the panko. Um, and you're going to dunk and roll your um, cauliflower in your batter and in your panko, making sure it sticks really well. Um, and then you're going to make your sauce. And you're going to bake it like 25 minutes or so on 450. You're going to chop up your um, garlic and mix it with that sweet chili sauce, soy sauce, lime juice, ginger. Simmer it. And then you spread it on top. A couple different ways. You could, this is a drizzle of it on top. It helps to, um, so it's not going to get soggy. Okay, you could dunk it, or you could like put it all in a big container and shake it up. So you get you know really that general sow's chicken kind of um, distribution all over the whole thing. Um, so we we drizzled this evening thanks to Jeff plating in the in the kitchen back there. So um, go ahead and give a try. Tell me what you think. Is it good? You like it? Thank you. Oh my God, this so sweet. Thank you. I'll eat that when I'm done talking. Uh, yeah, question. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a fast path suggestion. If you go to Whole Foods and Hot Bar, they have uh, cauliflower chopped up. Oh, nice. I know that it has this uh, character to it, but you know you get quickly yeah. that way, and then you can work it over with your suggestions. Uh, yeah. So there's lots of lots of 
lots of cheats, right? So you can get the cauliflower from the hot bar. You can also buy bagged cauliflower cut up, you know, um, trying to cut down on the plastic. Even this cauliflower, of course, it came wrapped in plastic. If you could find a farmer's market where you can get the cauliflower not wrapped in plastic, that would be ideal, right? Support your local farmers, avoid using any kind of packaging. Another cheat that Jeff told me when I told him how long it took me to bread 90 pieces of cauliflower, he said, you did each one individually. I was like, well, that's what your instructions said to do. <laughs> he said, no, you dump them all in a bowl and mix it up, and then you dump them in the other bowl, and you mix them up and you throw them in the oven. It's like, well, I'll pass that along to everyone else. <laughs> um, so individually dunking each one, I hope you appreciate the fantastic texture and coverage of the breadcrumbs crumbs on each one, but it's not necessary. You can kind of do them all at once. Um, and the other, the other cheat was the pre-made um, sweet chili sauce. There were several different brands. I had this employee of the store come over and ask me if I needed help because it took me about 15 minutes to figure out which one I was going to buy. This is what I struggle with in daily life. Um, one of the ones that I did not buy was loaded with extra sugar, like 25% of your daily sugar, right? Um, I don't remember how many grams it was. It was a lot of sugar. We put that one back on the shelf. These two I purchased. Um, this one, the Asian pantry, was the lowest in sugar. It has six grams. It's still 12% of your daily intake. If you make it from scratch, you can probably do better. Six grams of sugar, but that sugar is corn syrup. This one had, this one, oh my God, I can't read. It's so small. These are not made for people over 50. This has 11 grams of sugar, but it was real sugar. Um, but this one also had a bunch of sodium in it. So I didn't really want the sodium, um, even though, we use soy sauce, and so because of, that's not soy sauce. This is my soy sauce. Oh, where's my, I didn't bring the soy sauce. The soy sauce um, is loaded with sodium anyways. So it's one of those things you have to kind of make choices. Low sodium soy sauce maybe. I did pick the, um, the one with less sugar in it. If you make your own, you can probably do better. That's, I think, all I have with that. What's our next? So I'm going to introduce Barbara next to talk about the next course, soup. You can clip this. Yeah, we can clip this if you want. I was sort of waiting. Okay. Yeah. So you can clip it or you can hold it. You want to hold it? Uh, everybody hears me? Yep. Uh, Woo. My name is Barbara and I did a soup. And as you see, I love spices. All the spices are in my soup. Wow. Everything. All of this. And um, yeah, I like spices, this is what I want to say. And um, the soup is actually, look at this, this is the base and the spices ingredient are pretty long. But you can mix like, they're all even my favorite. So I have all this in my cupboard. You mix it, mix it, and you can use it in every soup, in every stew. So you don't need to mix it each time or so I have a little char with all the spices prepared. And usually I follow the recipe. Not always. So this time I only added cumin. Cumin is one of my favorites. I, I do it almost everywhere, but some people don't like the taste of it. But um, <laughs> it's not here in it, but I added it. So the recipe and the ingredients is really easy to get everywhere. It's potatoes, it's onions, it's, um, yeah. I used the. Uh, onions. Is that like in a jar? Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
But you know, you don't need to buy this. Uh, if you only use it for one recipe, just I, I did onions in it, and it's enough. And a little bit powder is also in it. Usually, I, I like the fresh ones. I'm not always adding powder to it. Only if I'm in rush and don't have onions, then I would add the powder. So you can use fresh onions now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the sage, it has to be dried, rubbed sage? Yeah. It's like also almost powder, a little bit more thicker than powder. And sage is one I love too. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's like rosemary, thyme, sage, parsley, mustard powder, sweet paprika, and turmeric. Turmeric is also, it says here, optional, but I put almost in everything turmeric. It's one of the healthiest spices on earth. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's the same like the other uh, quarter of teaspoon, yeah. Or I like it, I use a little bit more, but not here, not for this recipe. And um, I used um, soy milk and not oats. So I used the plant-based soy milk, unsweetened, and yeah. And baby kale, yeah, you can also, if I don't have kale and I don't want to run to the store and I have spinach in my refrigerator, I use spinach, you know, you can always change a little bit or do it a little bit different. I just want to say like, um, <laughs> Thank you. So I know only one person who is allergic to cashews, and I made a different soup. I did. <laughs> I did. Usually it says cashew, or I do it with cashew. But um, if you're allergic, please let them know that um, the other one is made with almond. And I do it from scratch. Like I soak it. Even the almonds, I peel it. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> I peel it and then I do my sauce with it. And I use a lot of cashews. I just love the creaminess. This is, I feel so good. This, and usually you don't get the creaminess with even nutritional yeast, or I like this creaminess. And just a little on the side about cashews. I didn't know, but I did a research. Cashews is actually a seed and not a nut. So it looks like almost little peppers. And at the end, they're hanging when they ripe, this little <coughs> cashew on it. And um, so really, but what I want to mention about cashew is also this cashews are in a shell. And this is very poisoning. So um, the most are growing in Africa, India, and China, cashews. And often, this is also said it's not very much sustainable. From Africa, they do the work, then it was transported to India and sent back to Africa. And I just want to mention, if you buy cashews or also other nuts, but especially cashews, that's a fair trade. I just feel people like some, it's, it's even more burning and rashes than poison ivy if you peel the skin off the cashew. And if people don't have clubs or whatever, you know, it's really try to get fair trade nuts or seeds or whatever. So I want to talk a little bit um, about the spices too. 
Yeah. Yeah. Should be. Yeah. It's all like, um, you know, spices are very colorful. If it's uh, paprika, if it's turmeric. I, I, I remember my daughter was in India and she uh, had a picture from people that are selling their spices. And it was so colorful, I never have seen before. It was so gorgeous. So, um, before I go to the spices, I want to mention it's not in my recipe, but usually I have kelp or dulse always in my soup. Kelp and dulse. D U L S E. So, the dulse is a red seaweed from Canada and Atlantic coast. It's high in vitamin A, C, E. B6 and B12, and the minerals include calcium, iodine, and magnesium, as well as protein and fiber. And kelp is a brown seaweed, and kelp contains at least 25 vitamins, including B1, B2, B6, B12, A, D, folic acid, covered and its end is high in many minerals, as well as magnesium, potassium, iron, calcium, iodine, and so forth. The only um, negative side on kelp is that if you have a thyroid problem, you shouldn't eat a lot of this seaweed. It's high on iodine too, and it's not good for your thyroid. But, um, and uh, they're usually flakes, and if you put it in the sauce, in the soup, in wherever it opens up, so one tablespoon is enough, or a teaspoon when you don't like the taste so much, but it's very healthy. So, and as I said. What was the first thing that you said? Dolph and Dolph. Dolph. Mm -hmm. And then I want to talk about cumin. Cumin is like a, a little seed, and I buy it grounded, then it's easier to put it in my food. And it helps with different types of digestive issues. So. It's really, if you have gas or whatever, put a little bit more in it. And so it really is very healthy in this one and have antioxidant. Parsley is rich in vitamin K and it's needed for blood clotting and bone health. It also has a great source of vitamin A and C. Rosemary has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compounds. And also, if you uh, apply it topically to the skin, it helps to relieve muscle pain. Rosemary also improves uh, the blood circulation, and it's a good also as essential oils. Maybe you know there are some shampoos with rosemary, so in afterwards you feel really your head is working. <laughs> the circulation is really working. So, and my new favorite is sage. It's um, all of, like, sage is of the mint family, like other herbs too, like basil, thyme, and the Latin word is salvada, and it means healing. It's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antibacterial. So sage tea helps with sore throat. It supports also oral health if you mix it when you buy a tincture or whatever and um, 
Call it. <laughs> Thank you. Then I have oregano. It's high in vitamin K, A, C, E6, and have also minerals like calcium, iron, and potassium. And also oregano, I have even oregano spray at home. It really helps. It fights bacteria and infections. This is one of the really um, very helpful for both of this. It's not only antibacterial or uh, antivirus, it has both components in it. Question. Yeah. Um, do you feel that the same nutrient properties in the dry herbs versus the fresh herbs versus the oil? Yes. Um, the oil is higher potent. You know, it, the stem is used in all this. So, um, the oil or the um, um, like oregano oil is very intense. One drop and you gargle. This is very intense, but um, dries even more intense. But it loses some of like vitamin C through heat. If you heat things up, you lose the vitamin C. But the properties, if it's dry or fresh, it's pretty much the same. And then turmeric, the magic. And it's really true, golden uh, gold. It's yellow gold. And it is. It's like really the best spice what you can use in everything. I do tea, and in my tea I do like turmeric and a little bit cayenne pepper to get a little bit of a kick. And so, but really turmeric, let's read what it helps for everything. Uh, helps protect the body by neutralizing free radicals, reduces inflammation, improves the immune system, eases joint pain, and it's best taken in food. This is also a really a big difference. In supplements, they're not so recommended. Uh, often the dose is too high, and um, in this point, it's not more is better. And if, if you take like high dose supplements, and you are at a risk of develop, development, developing kidney stones. So, but only if you're not taking it in food. Like, if you're getting supplements, they're often high dose. And what um, turmeric is also known as uh, the potential of the. Um, how it helps your body to absorb is through pepper, black pepper. So this is why usually if you do a soup or whatever and put turmeric in and you always do a little bit pepper in. So this and what I was reading, it's um, absorbing your body 2,000 times more if you have the pepper. So, any questions? I'm trying to find out that there was a cough remedy that involved turmeric and I think it was lemon juice, maybe, and tea and honey. Has anyone else heard of that? No. No. I think and ginger. Ginger, honey. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel there's so many like ginger or especially oregano. You are only think about spice, but it's really antibacterial and antiviral. So you can use it for like if it's a season. I I I use one drop with water and drink it during the day. Not like all the time or one big sip. I drink it during the day and it's really helpful. 
not at all sweet. I thought of these spices as adding flavor until this moment where you're providing me my understanding of the medicinal components of these herbs and spices. Thank you. And keep in mind when you buy whatever cashews or other nuts, try to buy fair trade. Thank you. I think there's a lot of soup out if you want more later. Beverage <laughs> or <laughs> Oh, if you want seconds on soup, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Maybe you take it off. I don't know. Thank you. Is everybody finding the microphone helpful? Is it, is it actually helpful? Is it helpful? Okay. Um, so let's see. Put that in the pocket. Can people hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so, oh, good. Um, so, are you going to, uh, when I want this slide changed, uh, who's changing it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you can leave it there for just a moment, but then go to the others, and then maybe we'll come back to it. I meant to. Yeah. Oh, is it like the end of the Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> my name is Linda, and I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to talk about grains. And before I talk to you about the recipe, the quinoa and mango salad that, that I made, and here's the recipe, I just want to give you a, a little overview about what grains are and what whole grains are, and give you some tips about. Um, what you should be looking for in the grocery store when you're shopping for grains. Uh, so, yeah, you've heard the term whole grain, right? So, um, yeah. So, what is a whole grain? Uh, it's a grain that's considered to be whole, a grain is considered to be whole as long as it has the three original parts that were there when the grain was in the ground. And so, these are the parts of the grain: <clears throat> the bran, the endosperm and the germ. And if you look at the definitions of the bran, the germ, and the endosperm, the bran and the germ are actually the ones with the most nutrients in them. So, you know, they, again, I won't read this to you, um, but, you know, they have a lot of antioxidants and a lot of vitamins, basically, the both the bran and the germ. The endosperm, which you see is the biggest part, is the part that it does have some Nutrients, but not as lot, not as many as the first two. Um, so, if you're eating a grain that we call a whole grain, you're eating all those three parts. So, does anyone know the difference between brown rice and white rice? <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you. If, if you put the next slide up there. <laughs> okay. Um, so, does, um, how many people tend to prefer to eat white rice? Okay, and how many people, I guess the others, uh, want it, like brown rice? Right? So, um, so we'll I'll tell you, oh, yeah, now let's go to, um, no? Okay, okay. Um, well, actually, maybe it's not up there, though. I don't think I have a brown rice flavor. Oh, okay. okay. That's okay. I'll just, I'll just explain it. Yeah. Okay, we'll just, we'll just leave that up there. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I, what I want to do before, again, I get to the recipe, is that I picked, there's so many different kinds of whole grains, and I just wanted to pick a few, so I picked six of them. And I picked brown rice because it's a very popular, rice in general is a very popular kind of rice. A, a popular kind of grain. But there's a big difference between brown rice and white rice. Brown rice has all those three parts that we talked about. White rice has only one part, 
the endosperm, which if you remember is the part that is the biggest, but it is the least nutritious of the three. So we really want to eat um, whole grains, which are grains that have those three parts, because if you're eating whole grains, you're eating the whole grain. <laughs> you know, you're eating all the more nutritious parts of the grain. And people... Both, both. So people, you know, people tend to like white rice because it cooks more quickly and it looks prettier. <laughs> um, but brown rice really is much more nutritious and brown rice really is the most nutritious rice that we can be eating and it has the most fiber. So I, I, dis you know, I think that's one of the most important things for you to know about the difference between the two. And we want to try to eat brown, I mean, we want to try to eat um, whole grains as much as possible. And if you put that slide up, Katie, with the, the, the stamps. So if you're in the grocery store and you're not really sure um, what you're buying, um, a lot of products will have these stamps on them. So if you're buying this for, first one says 100% whole grain, you know that it's everything in that product is whole grain. So if, in particular for breads, if you're looking for a bread that is more whole grainy than not, you want to look for 100% whole grain. Or if you can't find that, maybe 50% whole grain. Um, these will, the, just when it says whole grain, you're getting some whole grain, but you're not getting a lot. In this, you're probably getting more refined grain, which is grain where they've taken those two parts of the, of the um, thing apart. Right. Yeah. How do they do that process? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's probably just a factory process where, you know, kind of like the cotton gin, where they have some machine that removes those two parts. I, I don't know. Maybe other people know how they actually do that, but it, I'm sure it's a, a you know it's a mechanized um, factory process where they take those two parts out of the grain. Well, there may, there, no, there's some whole grain in this stamp, but it's, it also has uh, refined grain. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, if you get, you know, we, yeah, we love sushi. And we always get sushi with brown rice, which our children say is just not the thing you should do. You should always get it with white rice. But it's, it's much better to get sushi or anything with brown rice versus white. What about the different kinds of rice, like basmati and stuff? That always seems right, but I've never seen brown yeah, right, basmati. Yeah. You can't? I, yeah, I've bought, I've bought brown almost any kind of rice. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and look at the label, you know, look at the label, look to see if you see the stamp. Um, look, if the first ingredient says, says whole grain, it's more likely to be a whole grain. If it doesn't, if it just says wheat grain or something else, you, the, first la the first item on the ingredient should say whole grain. Yeah, yeah. Any just make brown rice? We, uh, yeah, most places that we get uh, sushi will make brown rice. Not always. You just have to pay a couple dollars extra for each maki that you, for some reason, because it, I don't know. What I've read is that you really should just look at what's the first ingredient. If it says 100% whole grain, then it's 100% whole grain. If it just says whole wheat or something like that as the first ingredient, it, it's not 100% whole grain. So just look at the labels, really. And again, I'm not like an expert on this, but um, you know, just look at the labels. That's, yeah, Barbara. Yeah, I just feel this is so awkward in a way, like it should be cheaper, the whole grain. You because you're not processing it right, you're not paying for that, right? Yeah, and but everything, if it's uh, um, yeah. flour, if it's whatever it is, it's more expensive, mm -hmm. it 
Is it original? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's brown rice. Um, the other um, rice that, or not rice, the other grain that I want to talk about is quinoa, and that's what's in this quinoa salad that you're going to um, be getting soon. So quinoa is a, um, and I'll say most whole grains, I forgot to say this, are gluten-free. There are some that are not, and if you're not sure, you can Google it and, and look it up, but most whole grains are gluten-free. So, um, so um, quinoa is probably the... I would say it's the queen of whole grains. <laughs> um, it is high in iron, mag manganese, phosphorus, magnesium, and zinc, and it has lots of calcium, potassium, and selenium. It has three to four times more nutrients than brown rice. Is so, it actually a seed? It, is it actually a seed? I don't know. Is it a seed? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so of all the, all the um, grains that I've you know, looked at, quinoa seems to have the most nutrients than any of the others. It has more protein. It has all the amino acids that you need, so it's actually a complete protein. Some of the other whole grains may not be complete proteins, and I can't tell you, honestly, which of those have, are complete proteins and which are not, and which are gluten-free and which are not. Um, I, there, one of the ones I was going to talk about, farro, is not gluten-free. So again, you know, if you're concerned, if, you're, if you need to be gluten-free and you want to buy one of these whole grains, you should just look whether or not it is. Most of them are, but there are some that are, are not. I don't want to be a downer, but we love quinoa, and I read, well, it came from Peru, and I read that once Americans decided this was a great thing to export from Peru, import from Peru. I mean, the Peruvians ate quinoa as their basis, just like rice and other places. Mm -hmm. And now it's too expensive for a lot of Peruvians. Uh -huh. So that's the sad part. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, we, well, we also know that organic foods cost more than Conventionally raised foods, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's a that's a problem. So anyway, there are different kinds of quinoa. I just have some packages up here. There's red, there's white, there's you know a bunch of different quinoa um, varieties. And in you, in the sample that you're going to get, it's a mixture of red and white. Um, so that's a really a good um, good whole grain. The other whole grain I want to talk about is oats. So most people know what oats are, but maybe you don't know that there are different kinds of oats. So there are steel-cut oats, and there are rolled oats, and then there are quick oats. And essentially, there are, um, they're just, the, the steel-cut oats and the rolled oats are just processed differently. They're really the same thing. They're cut, they're cut differently. Um, we have, um, this is a steel-cut oat. You know, it, it's a little less processed than the other, other so it takes longer to to cook, you know, so you, it, it's good to soak it overnight. That's what that's what we do. We soak it overnight so it kind of softens up. Then in the morning, you don't have to cook it for 45 minutes because if you don't do that, you have to cook it for 45 minutes. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait 45 minutes to eat my oatmeal. Um, with the rolled oats, it, it's less time. With the, um, the the quick oats, those are probably the least um, with the, the most processed, and it, that takes a second to cook. Um, and what else can I tell you about oats? They're, they're good. Um, a lot of these grains, uh, and oats in particular, have what's called a low glycemic index, which means, and I'm not a nutritionist or a physician, but it, it has to do with the amount of time that it takes to process the food in your, in your gut. And so you want to be, we want to be eating foods with low glycemic index because if you eat a lot of foods with high glycemic index, then it raises your blood sugar too much. So we want to eat foods like, oh, you know, that have low glycemic index. And if you're not sure, I mean, Dr. Google tells you everything. <laughs> um, the other grain I w want to talk about is farro which is not, this is one of the ones that's not gluten-free, 
and it's very nutritious. It's a, it's a much healthier alternative to white rice and other refined grains, good source of protein, fiber. And it's, it's, you know, it's tasty, and you can make it in a lot of different kinds of ways, whether you make it with uh, kind of like an oatmeal where you put a little, uh, you put some nuts in it or cranberries or whatever, or you could make it kind of in a sa uh, savory way and, and use spices and things like that. It's, it's pretty versatile. And we have some farro here. And then the other that I just discovered, thanks to Barbara, is teff. And so teff is a tiny grain that comes from Africa. It's, it's really small. And I've made it a few times to mixed reviews from, especially from my children, our children. Um, you can make it as a, kind of like a pudding. And it is, um, it is the grain that um, Ethiopian runners um, say um, it helps them with endurance uh, because it, it's, it's got a lot of nutrition in it. And um, it's a type of millet, which is another form of grain that I'll talk about in a second. And um, it is, um, what else can I tell you? It's, it's expensive. It's more expensive than some of the other grains. If, in part because it, it well comes from Africa, um, but also it's, um, it's it's tiny, you know, so you need a lot of it. To, it comes in flower forms. You can make bread and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Dorothy, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, most of them you can. Well, actually, mostly I've bought teff at Whole Foods, but I went yesterday to buy some and they didn't have any. So, Barbara. Well, mostly Whole Foods has a lot of these. Trader Joe's a bit. Garden of Light and Avon can get stuff for you. Sometimes Whole Foods doesn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the last one I'll talk about is millet, which is another gluten-free grain. And um, again, it's a lot of copper, magnesium, fiber. It's a low glycemic index kind of food. And again, I, a lot of these, you know, you, you, I feel like you use them as if in the same way you would use rice. You know, you could add things to it, uh, use it as a, as, a, as a, you know, a separate kind of side dish. Um, they all kind of work in the same way. They have slightly different flavors. Some are nutty and some are more chewy and, and things like that. And there, again, there's so many different kinds. I, mean, I just talked about a few of them. Um, and so I'll just go to the recipe and then I'll be done. Um, so this is a very easy recipe. Um, I, I think about it as being, uh, being broken into two, uh, three, actually three parts. So you, the first two parts, the, the water and the a quinoa, you cook, you know, you just cook it as if you're cooking rice. And you should look at the directions. Um, most of the time you um, have to rinse the quinoa to get, to make sure that it's all the, all the, I don't even know why you rinse the quinoa, but the grit, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. So you do that part. While you're doing that part, the, the last one, two, three, four, five, is, that is the, the dressing that you put on at the end. So you make that dressing. And then you just put it all together with the cranberries and with the parsley and with the either green onions or scallions. I used red onions, which I just read somewhere that red onions are more nutritious than white or yellow onions. And then the mango. But I'll, I'll make an admission. So I went to the store yesterday by mango, and I bought papaya instead. So we're cutting it. An hour before we left, let's cut the mango, and it was a papaya. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But you know, it. You know, it. It's fine. It's fine. I did. Yeah. Oh yeah. The papaya's in here. It's it's orange. Yeah. It's in little. It's time. Yeah, yeah. So now this could be the quinoa and mango papaya salad. So thank you very much. Thank you so much.
Welcome. tasting while I'm talking because I tend to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Really? They didn't in, in Whole Foods that day because I had someone work with me go through the whole blasted place and we didn't find anything and so I was spared. So they do. That's okay. I do enough different dishes for Janice. I really didn't want to do that one. So, fine. Okay, and I'm used to having a pointer. Okay, so please, um, we're passing out my dish. This is it, it's a honey lime tofu. So, first thing to know about tofu, right? Um, and I've had any number of people look at me and say, tofu, oh my God, don't ask me to eat tofu. Um, you can do lots of different things with it. The key is the sauce and the flavorings because it will take whatever you want, okay? So this one's honey limed and this is grilled, okay? So this is, um, let's see, I'm no, I don't have a clicker in my hand, so can we, we'll go, okay. So you guys all have the recipe. I'm not gonna walk you through the recipe. It's not hard, okay? Let's, let me, can we just go, let's just, let, let's just go back. Yeah, let me do my own slides. I'm used to, did I lose something? Just power. That we need. Fine. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the full, the full dinner version of that in a low resolution image, which works great on a little piece of paper, but doesn't blow up well once you've cropped the bejeebers out of it. Okay, so the way I present this, um, for a dinner, it's the sweet potatoes underneath with the slaw on top, the tofu on top of that, and the sauce, okay? Now, this can look intimidating, and the first time I did it is not a weeknight dinner. It was a Saturday, Saturday when I was like, I'm just cooking today, okay? This is now a weeknight dinner. This does not take long to do. For 40, it takes a little longer, but, um, Mash, mash sweet potatoes, right? Skin, dice the sweet potatoes, boil them 15 minutes. They're ready to go, right? Throw in some butter, throw in some salt, you're good. Done, right? That's the base, the slaw. Now, you know, I'm doing it for a lot of people, so I pulled out my food processor to grate all those things, but you can do it with just your hand grater, and I usually do when it's just, just the family, right? And it's some carrot, some radish, some cabbage and a vinaigrette, let it sit for 15 minutes, no more, get it out, okay? Because it'll start becoming a little too acidic, at least for my kids. If you want something more acidic, let it sit for longer. But after 15 minutes, I get it out, okay? And then the, the sauce is basically the vinaigrette. So honey, lime juice, uh, let's see, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, but not much. Okay, um, a little bit of soy sauce, 
a little bit of stock, and then, um, and then it's, okay, so here we go. The sweet potatoes, we start by just dicing it, right? Here's the slaw, okay? I'm just gonna take carrots, radish, cabbage, and I'm just gonna grate them. And there's my vinaigrette, lime, soy, honey, rice wine vinegar, okay? Now, the trick to the, my stuff is, while yes, I do shop at Whole Foods, I, when I put recipes together, try to make sure that you can get all this stuff at Stop and Shop or Trader Joe's or Big Y because not everybody lives near a Whole Foods, okay? Um, you can do amazing things with stuff that comes from the regular grocery stores. Regular grocery stores are quite good. Trust them, okay? So there's our slaw, and again, we're just gonna let it sit in the bowl for 15 minutes, then we're gonna pull it out so it doesn't get too acidic, okay? Now the tofu, right? I don't do, go any, to any great lengths from tofu. The tofu that you're eating came from Costco, okay? I don't even know the name of the brand. When it comes to tofu, it is remarkable. The, man, the, the differences among brands are almost indistinguishable to me, okay? So while I love, um, I think it's called Tower Bridge tofu that the, you can find at Whole Foods and it's made in Middletown and if you want to support someone local, Great, it's about twice the price. Of course, now let's remember, what's the price of tofu? Block of tofu, two bucks. Okay, so I'm paying 350, four bucks for tofu. Okay, but there's your protein source. Now, you're eating this, I hope you find the tofu tasty. It's got a good sauce on it, right? So if you're going to cook with tofu, Understand the value and the power of the sauces and of a little bit of marinating. I will oftentimes bake tofu in soy sauce. I dice my tofu, I put it in a baking dish, I cover it with soy sauce. Okay, not like cover it. I cover it, just drizzle soy sauce over, throw it in the oven, 20 minutes. It's very forgiving. If you, if you forget about it, fine. Okay? Do you ever um, take a paper towel? I've given up on pressing tofu. I've given up on pressing tofu. So if I, if I decide I want to press tofu, right, I used to do the press. I would press it for 20 minutes. Oh, no. So I put it in. I got a little press for seven bucks from Amazon. Put it in that. Put um, a bowl of water on top for my weight and just let it sit. I've got a sister who, who made her own tofu. So don't even go there. <laughs> yeah. If I decide to press tofu now, I will just grab the, the block, I'll hold it over my sink, and I'll squeeze it and try not to crush it. Yeah. That's true, but you'll but you will change the texture of it. Yeah. Yeah. The other, the other trick is, and I'll get to this when we talk about proteins, but since we're talking about tofu, is there are four grades of tofu. Silken, regular tofu, firm tofu, super firm tofu. The only difference is the amount of water. So instead of pressing the tofu, instead of buying firm, buy extra firm, okay? The, what you're eating is extra firm, okay? And then I grilled this, yeah. Yeah, no, I just asked a question. You grilled it on, like you grill outside? Or on a slide? Of course I've got a slide for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, well this is, all right. I put this in the wrong sequence. This is thickening the sauce at home. That's it. So we're gonna take the vinaigrette, we're gonna add some stock, we're going to put some cornstarch in it, and that's it. Now, the sauce you have, when I do it for a group, I can't do that way. But that's the way I do it at home. That's my grill pan. I put my sauce right into the grill pan that's hot. The burner's off. The pan is still hot. Thicken it. Good to go. Pour it right on top. 
Very, and you saw how fast. That's 22 seconds. Okay. So don't don't get distracted. You don't have to pay attention for too long. Okay. And then boom, that's it. Um, so for grilling the tofu, so right, I grilled these today. It's not grilling weather, right? So I've got my grill pan. And when we get to our retirement house and I have an induction stove, then it'll be an induction grade grill pan. And I will have one. But straight pan, just put the, the tofu on it, three minutes, flip it, three minutes again, pull it off, done. That's what you have, OK? Then I sauced it, OK? Very simple, very straightforward, OK? The nice thing about this is we've got multiple textures going on with the mashed potatoes. The, uh, the slaw has got a crunch. And the tofu is somewhere in between. And then the flavors are, you know, they're not the common flavors. This is not a gravy, right? This is, this is a little bit of sweet, a little bit of acid, a little bit of sour, a little bit of salt in from the soy all together, right? Um, so the nice thing about this particular dish is the sauce really carries the day. The more you cook plant-based, the more you learn to appreciate the value of sauces. Okay? How long did you say you, you cooked, grilled the tofu? Three minutes each side, done. That's it. And when I'm cutting it, that, that slab of tofu made eight pieces. Okay? Now, you guys got just one piece. This isn't a full dinner. It would normally be two pieces, but fine. For a block of tofu for two bucks, I feed four people. That's their protein. Okay? So when people tell you that when you go plant based, it costs less, we're not kidding. Okay? It's delicious. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I was a little concerned because usually it goes very close to from the stove to the plate to the thing, and this doesn't let that happen. Um, okay. So the assembly, if you're going to do this dish, the assembly is very straightforward. But this is not a dish to be served family style. OK, the assembly matters. And it does because you want to get the slaw and the right proportion on top. And don't trust your diners to do it for themselves. OK? I know, sorry. <laughs> it's a little bit of, of sweet potato, the slaw on top, then the tofu. And then the final presentation, OK? And, and I will do this on a Wednesday night for a 6 o'clock dinner when I get home at 5.15. It's that fast, OK? And you don't have to, and it's not like in one chef's book I read one time, it's like, well, your fast is my slow. This doesn't require that, OK? Like, you just, you dice the, you dice the potatoes, you get them going. While they're going, you do the tofu, fine, or, or you do the slaw. The slaw needs to go next, and then you do the tofu. Boom, and you have a lovely dinner, OK? And when I did this in my cooking class, this was under my special nights. You remember that, Cindy? Yeah, but now it's, now it's a weeknight, so. Well, I mean, it looks like a special nights dinner, but you know, um, but I can do this. I'll, I'll get home and I go, I have everything at home. OK, because you saw none of those are funky ingredients, right? I have everything at home. We can make a lovely dinner. And I can have it done by the time Janice gets home. So I noticed on your recipe, Jeff, that you use a plant-based butter. And yes. our concern about any plant-based butters that we sell is that the, one of the major ingredients is palm oil. So All right, so I've not been reading the, OK, I've not been reading the ingredients on plant-based butters that closely. Um, if you I, have you taken a look at Earth Balance, it, Earth Balance has palm oil in it too. Okay, I can't get around from that. Um, yeah, I've taken all my curries and I don't put coconut oil in them anymore, or coconut milk in them anymore. Um, coconut milk is like really bad for you. Uh, No, I mean, I, well, okay, I try to use, in the dish you got, I use no oil. Um, and I tried to cook with almost no oil. In fact, I even browned my onions dry. Um, and, but 
I don't know how to get around the plant butter one. It's, huh? yeah. Well, all oils and all butters you should move, use in moderation. But um, yeah, like in the, in the six sweet potatoes for you guys, there was a stick and a half of butter in the whole thing, right? There was, you know, about a little more than half a tablespoon of salt. Okay, so for everybody. We don't use olive oil. When I use olive oil, when I use oil, it's oftentimes olive oil. My kitchen, I use olive oil and canola oil. Um, but again, I try to use like no oil. Um, if you ever look, if you ever looked at the graph in Janice's presentation, I think she has a uh, the oil usage in America over years, and for for the longest time, it was flat. And since the mid 80s, it's just done this. Um, so we're way up here. We need to be down here. Oil, oil's not healthy. There's just, I don't care what they say. Oil's not healthy. Okay. So we've talked about tofu a little bit. We need to talk about um, plant based proteins a, a tad. Um, so let's see. Oh, whoa. Okay, sequences, not what I thought. Let me, let me see if I can find our slides on. I'm going the wrong way? No, I've got a whole series of slides. Okay, so first of all, okay. So there's a slide that Katie uh, provided that talks about the, the plant-based proteins. Beans are great. Beans are protein, right? The more you can do with, yeah, Katie, okay, the slides are, I can't find the, the series on plant-based proteins and meat substitutes. That's what I thought, but it wasn't there. I know. I know, see, now I go to black bean brownies, which is, well, yes, it's protein, it is. There we go. That's fine. So here we are. Okay. Um, so proteins, pumpkin seeds, peanut butters are great. Hemp seeds, the nuts are here. Tofu, look at it. 17, uh, what is this? Um, per 100 grams. Okay. And 100 grams is nominally a serving. Okay. Um, but the beans, the nuts are very high. The beans are, all, are really good. The catch with nuts, be careful with nuts. They are full of calories. If you are watching your calories, you know, you're better off eating sunflower seeds than you are almonds and peanuts. Don't even talk about them, okay? And, and I love peanuts, um, okay? Um, Hemp seed, hemp seed is a great one, and it, and it does not have the fat and calories that peanuts do, okay? Now, when I started learning plant-based cooking, I got a cookbook from the restaurant Veg in Philadelphia, and if you're ever in Philadelphia and you have, and you can call ahead a week ahead of time to get a reservation, Veg is to die for. But the first time we tried to get there, we couldn't get in. Um, but in his cookbook, Rich Landau and his wife, Kate Jacoby, they don't use any meat substitutes. It is plant-based. If it ain't a plant, really, originally, there's no tofu, there's no tempeh, there's none of that. And if you can get your proteins off of plants, and guess what? You can. It's there, right? You are better off than doing the meat substitutes, okay? It's just healthier. We have to remember when you bite into an apple, you're not getting a set of, of you know, vitamins. You're getting a system. When you bite into a bean, you're not getting a set of nutrients. You're getting a system. Nature provided this for us. We're evolved to eat this stuff. Use that. Okay? Now, that said, okay, I cook with a lot of meat substitutes. Okay, it's really hard to do um, a plant-based diet regularly in your life and never 
not use meat substitutes. Okay, okay tofu we talked about. The difference is all about the water. And instead of pressing it, just buy the next one up. Okay? And if I want to grill tofu and I do a, 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 a teriyaki tofu slider out on the outside grill, I will get the super firm tofu. Now that one's going to look different than the others. It won't be in a, in a hard plastic tub. It's in a vacuum sealed bag. And that is really firm. And you can treat that like a burger. Okay? And it works great. Okay? Tempeh. Do you guys know tempeh? Anybody? Yeah? Okay. So tempeh, oh, the other thing about tofu to remember, it's already pre-cooked. You can't undercook it. It's already good. Okay, and in fact, I'll make a dessert. I make a mousse where I take silken tofu and berries and just blend the snot out of them and serve it. And it's really good. Okay? Um, now, so, but tempeh, you have to remember, tempeh is not pre-cooked. It needs to be cooked. And the, the restaurateurs at V Street, which, is the, which was the sister restaurant to Veg, um, gave me a secret. On all their tempeh, they, they, they hot braise it, which is to say they put it in a solution of, of water and a vinegar of some sort, um, depending on the dish. And they will cook it for up to an hour like that. I have found that you can cook it, if you cook it 10 minutes, that's great. But in my family, when we tried tempeh, right, without hot braising it, nobody was happy. But when we did hot braise it, it worked great. We've got, I do a, a tempeh taco where I hot braise it and then I will fry it and put it into a taco with an Asian slaw and stuff, and it's a winner. The kids like it, I like it, um, my wife likes it. She's less critical than the kids. Okay, um, but you do have to cook that stuff. One of the favorites in the family right now is a stuff you can buy, and I've only seen it at Whole Foods, called Mindful Chicken, okay? And Mindful Chicken works great in Things like stir fries and soups, and we, I used it the other night um, for dinner for, for med students on a, a peanut curry bowl. So it was farro, brown, farro, barley, some vegetables, and this stuff in a peanut curry sauce. And it's a big favorite, okay? The other one that I really like is seitan. It took me a while to find a recipe that I could work with that I thought really appreciated. So it's called wheat meat. Okay. Now, if you are <coughs> sensitive, run far because this is just gluten. Okay. You get the gluten flour and you knead it and mix it and simmer it for 45 minutes. But now you can take it and I will slice it and it makes a reasonable, a very reasonable substitute for pork and beef and a stir fry. Okay. And I will. I will do that. It takes five minutes of mixing and kneading, put it in, the, in the, the pot to simmer, and then I'm on the computer doing work for 45 minutes. Come back, it's good. Okay? Um, so that's one, that's one that I use a fair amount. Okay? Ground beef substitutes, textured um, TVP, textured vegetable protein, and, or textured soy protein also. Um, so at Trader Joe's, there's one thing called beefless ground beef, and I will use it in my, in my chilies, and it can go in lots of things. If you want to do a, a um, not a bourguignon, um, bolognese, thank you. If you want to do a bolognese, uh, that's a reasonable way to go. Now, we all know about Impossible and Beyond Beef, right? We've heard about these. They do, they do a great substitute for a for beef, especially in a burger, be careful. The saturated fats are only a little bit better than beef, okay? So yes, you are better off with an impossible burger than a beef burger. That's healthier and it's better for the planet. But it's not great. We try to stay away, I, I will do those no more than once a month, okay? But like tomorrow's gonna be a high of 25 degrees. So I know that my son would love to have 
um, Beyond Sausage baked with sauerkraut with mashed potatoes and homemade applesauce because that is a great cold day dinner. Right? And it's all, it's vegan, okay? But you haven't shot my wad. <laughs> There's my Beyond Beef for the month. So no cassoulet that month, okay? And I do do a, I do a, um, I do a vegan cassoulet that includes the, the Beyond Sausage, okay? But you know, and let's also remember these things, they are ultra processed foods. One of the problems with American diets is ultra processed foods, okay? They are the worst thing we can put in our body, okay? And that's even after you take the trans fats out of it, okay? Um, so, you know, let's see. Calcium? Can you do this the next one, or we can skip them? We have a slide on calcium and another one on fiber. You tell me. Do you want to skip it? Let's skip it. Let's skip it. Oh, let me make one point. I forgot to make one point about protein. So proteins, right? So 0.8 grams per kilogram per day for us, for the average 150-pound person, that's 55 grams of protein a day, OK? so. The dish that you just ate was that piece of, of tofu was probably 18 grams of protein, right? That's, you're almost a third there. You do that three times in a day, you're good. So when people ask plant-based diet eaters, it's like, well, where do you get your protein? It's like, from plants. <laughs> it's all there. There's all sorts of sources. The, 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 the mindful chicken I was telling you about, it's the same sort of thing. It's 18 grams of protein per serving, okay? So getting the proteins out of your plants is not an issue. Um, it does take paying attention and being cognizant of what you're doing, okay? You need, uh, one of the things that kills me about the recipes from veg is there's not sufficient protein in there. I, I have to go back and add it to somewhere to make sure we get it, but beyond that, um, you know, as long as you, you keep your head screwed on, you can get there. It's not a problem. Okay.
So this is a very easy, can you hear me? This is not turned on. There are a bunch of seconds on the table back here. I am going to hand out dessert, but if you guys want to come and there's a literally a crock pot full of soup. That's oh, and bigger cups. Um, and bigger, bigger cups. <laughs> and All right. I'd love to see more. Can you guys hear me back there? Okay. You can. Okay. Sort of. Okay. I'll try to talk louder. <laughs> this is a very easy recipe to make. You put all of the ingredients except the uh, oat flour, the chocolate chips, and the walnuts in your food processor. Process it all up and make it nice and smooth. Then you put it in a bowl. You fold in your flour, fold in your chocolate chips, fold in your walnuts, and put it in your baking pan, and you're good to go. The, this recipe has, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about sweeteners in a minute, but we, um, I did use a couple of different sweeteners. I used maple syrup and I used um, coconut sugar in this recipe. You can, you, you can cut the sugar way down if you're trying to watch your sugar intake. I also used cacao powder, which is a less processed version of cocoa powder. Um, it's got more nutrients in it, so it's a little better for you, but it does have a, a stronger taste, so the extra sweetener helps balance that. Um, so yeah, that's the recipe pretty much. Oh, and just a quick little tip when you're baking, if you're using a glass, you know, if you're, you can, you can either um, use oil to do your pan, or you can use uh, the parchment paper. I typically use parchment paper. A nice little tip for parchment paper because you know how you try to use it and it pops back up and it doesn't want to, if you run it under water hmm. and then wring it out or you know, shake it out, it'll, it'll mold to your pan oh, so that you can just pour it in nicely and uh, you don't have to fight with your parchment paper. I also use silicone baking pans so I don't have to use parchment paper or oil or anything for those. Once it starts to cool off, you can just pop it out with no problem whatsoever. So that's the brownies. How do I? Arrow down. Four, four, right. Okay, there we go. So you're also having some banana ice cream with your with your uh, brownies tonight, and this is very very easy to make. You just use really ripe bananas, peel them, slice them, and there's, if you slice them in smaller chunks, it's easier to process. Put them in your freezer. I usually put parchment paper down on my baking sheet because otherwise it's really next to impossible to get them off <laughs> without melting them a little, which defeats the, pro the point um, to get them into your, and then yeah. I store them in a silicone bag in my freezer and I have them available whenever I want to make it. So you can do this in a food processor or you can do it in a blender. I did mine in a blender. The recipe that comes with this calls for just bananas. I find that I put a little splash, I use soy milk, I just put a little splash of soy milk in it. It gives it a little extra creaminess and it also helps my blender work a little better. <laughs> but you have to keep tamping it down and really uh, working hard on it. And I did not add any sweetener. What? There's no sweetener? No. It's just bananas and soy milk. And you put other flavors? Like yeah, you can. Um, I think there's another slide here. Uh, yeah. So here's there's some suggestions. Um, if you go to the website, they have suggestions. It's also called nice cream. So if you search for nice cream, you can get all kinds of different flavors. I like it like this, and I usually put just a tiny little sprinkle of um, chocolate chips and maybe a little sprinkle of nuts on it. Um, I put coconut on it. Some, um, I have put peanut butter in it, which is nice little thing. I put cocoa powder in it. Um, I am going to try that sea salt caramel one with the dates mm -hmm. and, the, and the little sprinkle of salt. That sounds really good. And I have used just um, other fruit with no bananas. I've used like a cherry, frozen dark cherries with um, a little soy milk. That's pretty good. So if you don't want the banana flavor, you can do that. Any other? 
question. What is spirulina? Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> the green green. It's yeah. the seed. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it. Why would you want any spirulina in ice cream? I, I don't know, but it just makes a pretty I mean, color. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, and that's a nice thing that you can put in all kinds of stuff. Agave, bananas can be substituted for some sugars, and then xylitol. And that one also talking to dogs. So yes, if your dog, with your, yes, don't let your dogs get don't get too bad. Okay, here's some egg substitutes. So when we're thinking about baking, we want to think about when we're going to substitute the eggs. We want to think about what eggs do for baked goods. So they can be a leavening agent. They can help the air in there expand when you bake it. Can help your um, baked goods to rise. It can add moisture, uh, it, the taste, it holds it together. So we want to think about all of those things when we're substituting. So we've got, you can use all of these things to substitute for an egg. So one overripe banana and the black beans, black bean brownies, the bananas are used in, in place of eggs. Um, and I like this, this uh, website here because he, tells you which kinds of baked goods these are good to substitute in. And if you go to that website, it also gives you recipes that you can try using those different kinds of egg substitutes. Silken tofu can be substituted in quick breads, muffins, pound cakes, vegan yogurt in quick breads and muffins. Flaxseed and water makes a great substitute for eggs. You mix it a uh, tablespoon of flaxseed, ground flax, you want it to be ground flaxseed with three tablespoons of water, mix it up, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and it really kind of takes on the consistency of an egg, so it works really nice. I use it in pancakes, um, cookies, cakes and brownies. Quarter cup of fruit puree or veggie puree, you can use, uh, in the, you, instead of like a banana, you can use pumpkin, you can use applesauce, you can also use a, um, a mashed up sweet potato. Chickpea brine or aquafaba, <laughs> which is really fun to say. You can use that in place of an egg. You can whip up chickpea brine. You want to use unsalted chickpea brine. Um, you can whip it up into a meringue. And you really, I've I tried this. I had to. Um, but you can whip it up into nice stiff peaks, just like a meringue. Taste is a little different. I, I think it's probably an acquired taste. But um, it works. And I would imagine that you wouldn't get the taste so much if, if you were going to bake it into cookies or um, cakes, but I haven't tried it. What is the chickpea brine? The liquid from, uh, from, from a can of chickpeas. Chickpea. Yep. Oh. So you just drain the liquid and Yikes. use that. Yeah. Gives a lot of that. Well, yeah, I have some great <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of alternatives, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll send you some black seeds for yeah, some. I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then cornstarch and water can also be used in custards, pies, and pizza cake. Yeah, Jeff. So, so thinking that the place you got that website, that includes my favorite egg substitute. Have you ever tried the duck egg? I have not. Okay. One for one, table spoon, table spoon. Duck egg will replace an egg. I've used it in all sorts of things. Um, the only thing I've not successfully done as a scrambled egg, uh -huh. it wasn't a winner. As yeah. an omelet, it works. Yeah. Um, so what, is, what is the beef? Mung bean. Mung bean. Ah, cool. It's okay. mung bean. So it's going to be high protein just like eggs. Yeah. But, um, you know, and I'll do it when I've got a, you know, a slow morning that I don't have to rush out. I'll make myself a, a duck egg omelet with a plant-based cheese and put it in the middle. And, um, and it works really nice. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to try that. But, and, and you can find it at all the stores. For one strange reason, the duck egg products are cheaper at Whole Foods than any other store. I don't know why. Go figure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions? Good brownies. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh yes, thank you. You can actually use the chia seeds just like flax seeds. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can use it the same way. Thank you. I meant to mention that. Thank you so much. We want to thank all our other. Uh,
compost promotion in the fall of this month, where I'm encouraging people to either arrange a way to compost in your backyard, and we're going to be working with the town of West Hartford to order discounted compost bins, or if you don't want to compost in your backyard, sign up with the work, you may pick up your food scraps, plus meat, bones, and like anything except for plastic, throw paper in there, not like office paper, but napkins and things. They'll pick it up and they'll take it and compost it somewhere else. Okay. So um, that's kind of what we've got coming up with Green Sanctuary. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, there is a basket going around for donations for food share, or you can use the QR code in here somewhere, or just go on their website. It's completely voluntary. This is our gift to you, and we hope that you can pay that forward to somebody else. So we hope you had a good time. And if you guys, so if you're hungry,